ब्रह्मा गुरुर विष्णु गुरुर देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम सहना सहनौ घुन सह वीर कर्वा वहे तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्त मेषावहे ओ शांति 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 so my friends we are learning together yog sutra last week we have learned something about what exactly is sutra and how to open that sutra based on the commentary given by great masters i cannot open the sutra by myself but i should refer the many great commentators who are also the great masters of the eastern wisdom if we do not study these yoga sutras based on the commentary it will not give us the right knowledge that was the and then we studied about the history why patanjali is known as patanjali and then we also understood uh, patanjali was a polymath he was a great genius uh, to remove the impurities of the mind leading to awakening by the practice of yoga and meditation removing the impurities of the body by ayurveda so his contribution to the ayurveda the herbal medicine that you call it here and also the sanskrit grammar that how our speech should be also be pure mind should also be pure and body should also be pure that is his great contribution then we started learning the four fundamentals do you remember the four h do you remember the four h he he tu han hanopaya do you remember so what is they this four fundamental is also is in buddhism is known as four noble truth what is suffering what is the cause of the suffering what is the absence of suffering and what is the way method practice to bring an end to the suffering that is the four noble truth now you will say it is the buddha who created this principle no in upanishads in yoga sutra in many other text these four noble truth have been explained by the word heya heya means what is the cause hetu ah uh, heya means what is suffering hetu means what is the cause of the suffering right and han 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 means the absence of suffering and hanopaya is the method of suffering yeah it is better i was early in the morning so i said let me prepare a title subtitle of the topic so we are going to cover these nine topics today why i am not uh, directly taking up the yoga sutra because if we do not have the basic concepts clear then it is very difficult to understand yoga sutra 
ask yourself why you want to study Yoga Sutra to become a teacher. But the real purpose of studying any text of Eastern wisdom is to study yourself. Remember this. Who are you? Alexander. But Alexander is the name. You cannot be named. But I'm a beautiful woman. You, I cannot be. Oh, from where? Because of the shape and the size and the gender of the body. No, I'm not a woman. Then who am I? So as you continue to find the ultimate cause of who am I, where we reach, that is what we studied yesterday. What were, yeah, Upanishads. What we studied? We studied that we are real self. And the real self is absolute consciousness existence place what is that real self is the nature of pure awareness of truth of peace of happiness of love of wisdom keep a smile on the face uh, yesterday i was also telling you huh? so now we should understand what patanjali says about he he tu han hano paya. What is suffering? What is the cause of the suffering? And what is the absence of suffering? And what is the method by which we can bring an end to the suffering? So yoga has twofold objective. One is to bring an end to the suffering, and the second objective awaken to my true nature that we are going to study in yoga sutra in the first four sutras that summarizes the entire yoga so now let us see why from where these four words are used in in Yoga Sutra. So if we read uh, chapter 2 and the 16th Sutra, we find the word Heya. Uh, those who have not joined, uh, so before, let me put some uh, brief of it. So there are four words. You see that sometimes we say, no, Buddha says only the four noble truths. We don't say the entire. All masters, they use the same principles. No masters have discovered in later years any principle. The principles remain the same. But their expression changes. So do you see that hey, ah, what exactly is suffering? Hey, tu, what is the cause of this suffering? The science knows it. What is the cause of my anxiety? Science understands it. Really? If science really understands, then why the mental illnesses are increasing at an alarming rate? Tell me. Alexis, Alexander wants to say something. So we know the immediate cause in science. It is a symptomatic way of understanding a particular disease. Yoga understands the root cause. That is the basic difference. So when we understand the root cause, our mode of treatment or practice should also be different. Are you getting it? Symptomatic, 
organ-oriented approach in science, holistic approach in yoga. So now come to the first where we find the heya. What is heyam dukham anagatam? In the second chapter, the master says yoga can avoid or eliminate sorrow and suffering in the future, including future birth and the death. What it means, heyam dukham anagatam. When you are practicing yoga according to what Patanjali says, not according to what I understand. Do you see the difference between? You cannot understand water according to you. H2O, you cannot make it N2O. If you make it N2O, then it is not water. <clears throat> then you have not studied chemistry. But unfortunately, in yoga, <clears throat> we have our own style. We have our own understanding. Can you have your own, and own style and understanding of water? Or the space as it is understood by the physics? So why it has happened? Because we don't go and study the basics. We have, do not study Yoga Sutra as it is explained by the commentators of the Yoga Sutra who are also the masters. Am I making the things clear? So I'm not teaching you. I'm just teaching you the knowledge that I received from my master. And they are very well explained and written. Last time I told you that Yoga Sutra has been, has many commentators of Yoga Sutra. So I'm referring the commentary by Vyasa. Vyasa was another great master. Vachaspati, Mishra, there was another great master and Vigyana Bhikshu, third master, and fourth is uh, Bhoj. So I'm referring their commentary, their explanations of Yoga Sutra. It is not mine. So Heyam Dukham Anagatam. So what he says, the word heyam is added here, heyam. So what are the four words? Huh? What is heya? What is suffering? Hetu, what is the cause of the suffering? Han, what is the absence of suffering? And what is the method? Hanopaya. So here the word heyam dukham anagatam. So what does it mean? Yoga can avoid or eliminate sorrow and the suffering in the future. Can you guess? It is going to root out the root cause of your suffering. You are suffering from stress today and you practice yoga according to Patanjali. So what is going to happen? that now you have rooted out, you have completely removed the ultimate cause of the suffering so that you continue to live in peace and happiness. Did it happen before you? You have been practicing yoga for so long. Ask yourself, if that is not has happened, then we have to understand. Now, beautiful concept comes from the Sutra, second chapter in the Sutra number 17. So, what we are understanding in today's lesson, that basic understanding of Yoga Sutra, then we will go one by one. So, what is this? 
what is here he too what is the cause of the suffering have you ever heard the husband and the wife they have differences right do you agree they have differences but have you seen the difference between a man and the women? I'm explaining this sutra in a different way to make you understand. Say, you have a difference between you and your honey. I come to your house. I see both of you as a man and women, so there is no problem. Do you see that? When you go to others' house, Why it happens? Why it happens? Once you understand it clearly, from today, there will be no issue in your life. Provided you understand it and you apply it. So do you understand that you are a wife right you are a husband so now tell me is wife or husband is before you as a man or a woman or otherwise first you are a man then you are a husband first you are a woman then you are a wife am i right there cannot be wife or husband without women or a man. Am I clear? Right? First, you are a man, you are a woman. You became husband and wife. So when you identify with the label husband and a wife, then what comes? you live in a false identification that causes the problem in entire eastern wisdom we say there is a truth there is untruth and there is a false you see asatoma satgamaya Moving from the false to the truth leads you to the end of suffering and awakening to the reality. So, truth means Satchidananda. Yesterday we studied Sat means here not to speak the truth, but it means the real self. Sat, real self, my true nature essential nature am i making the things complex or are you understanding what is the difference between essential nature and superficial nature sweetness of a sugar is essential nature and what is the superficial nature of a sugar? Ice cream, desert, candy, they all contain sugar. But their name, shape, characteristics, outer characteristics are different. Are you getting it? Huh? What is your essential nature? Garish? You yeah. said truth and untruth, and then there's a third. What was the third? Mithya. Satya, asat, and mithya. Sat, asat, and mithya. So sat means truth. Asat means untruth. Mithya means false. Are you getting it? Thank you. So three things that you have understood. 
Untruth means if I say, oh, I saw the elephant, elephant flying in the sky. It is untruth. Not possible. Right? So untruth you have understood. The truth you have understood. What is mithya? Once you understand and you, you understand and you are aware that here it is the false, that causes all the problems. What is false? That which appears true, but it is not true. Brandy, did you understand? Keep a smile on the face. We are not studying, you know, uh, how to go to Mars and moons. We are studying Yoga Sutra to study ourselves. To study ourselves. So if you keep a smile on the face, I will understand that you are paying attention to me. Is it a big deal for you? Yes, it is a big deal. I explained the cause. Anyhow, come to the mithya. Mithya means that appears true, but it is not true. If you see the sky, you always see it is blue in color. Is it true? Is sky blue? Science says, no, it is not blue. Do you know that? Through the physics, we understand that it is what appears true. It appears true. The wife appears true. Can you show me where is the wife in you? Tell me. Show me. Can you show me the husband in you? You see, we should understand. These are the basics of any whether it is Yoga Sutra or meditation. So, Mithya. So, it means I'm not the husband or wife. I'm not saying this. <laughs> Don't take it otherwise. I have to live in the truth. What appears true is not true. Can I cite another example before? Then we will go to another. Yes. A beautiful example given in Upanishads. They say you are walking late in the evening and you saw a snake. You are scared. But then you bring, you throw the torch light on that which appears to be a snake. And what do you find? you find a rope. So what happens to your fear? Fear is gone. What appears true is not true. So Master says your anxiety, your stress, your suffering, your pain, your blame, your complaint, your reaction appears true, but they are not true. You are made up of your real nature. Finished. That is the journey of yoga. Then what happened? Why you are scared? Alexander is speaking something. Okay, okay, okay. Very good, very good, very good. So do you see that? Now see the other example. You are dreaming. Tiger is chasing you. You are scared. And now... The last point, the tiger is going to jump on you and you woke up. What happened to the tiger? Tiger is not there. You are already in your bedroom. Clear? But the fear, you are sweating. Palpitation in the heart. Do you see that? That is how our masters explain that your fear is unbecoming. It is not real. Your anxiety is not real. Are you getting it? Do you understand that point? So what is the teaching? Anytime mind says you are stressed, your mood is swinging, oh, it's false. First thing is the recognition. If you identify with Anxiety and the suffering, 
there is no end. What did I say? Identification. Are you with me? What did I say? Identification. So yoga solves this identity crisis. We all are suffering from identity crisis. I'm your husband. How dare you go there? I'm your wife. And then you, you have, might have made a lot of statements. I know that. It's not a big deal. Identity crisis. Are you getting it? Are you understanding that point? As long as you are suffering from identity crisis because of the false superimposition in your life, in your mind, in your speech, in the thought, nobody can help you to get rid of the suffering. That is what the sutra drashya drashtayo sanyogo hetu. That is the essence, that is the meaning. Did you get it? Will you change from today? If you change from today, then only you can change others as a yoga teacher. Then you have a tremendous confidence. Yes, I know where is the problem. I will help you explain the problem. I will give you the practice and you will change. Are you getting it? I was just asking Kate, all our yoga teachers in this, she was saying yes. Are you getting it? So start the journey from your home. Bring the peace at your home first. And then you can, you know what we say, there is a big good proverb. Oh, charity begins at home. Yes. You see that? So did you understand this sutra? Drashya drashyayo sanyogo he ahetu. When we go back to the second chapter, we will understand it little deeper. Are you getting it? That is the meaning of second uh, chapter 17 sutra. As long as you are suffering from this identification, mind says, I will fight with you. So first become aware, do you have identity crisis? Who is going to fight? A man or a husband? Women or a wife? The moment you understand the problem being a man or the women, that identity crisis drops. Then you see the problem in its entirety and you can solve the problem. That is what I do. It's a play and fun for me. <laughs> for me, it's a play and fun. Don't tell anyone, you know, if you refer any student to me, don't tell them it's a play and fun. The moment that identity crisis is gone from your mind, your mind is very clear. You know where is the root cause of the problem. By the Yoga Sutra, I'm intruding into your life. But indirectly, you are not telling me anything. But I can understand. Right? Now let us see the third, another Sutra. Uh, what we are understanding? We are understanding where Patanjali is using these four words, what is suffering, what is the cause of the suffering, what is the absence of the suffering, and how, what is the method. So initially, what did we understand? That Hano, what we understand? Uh, what? anagatam. First, we have understand that if we practice yoga, we can bring an end to the miseries that may come in the future. So we are bringing an end to the suffering that may come into the future in my life. Then we entered, what is that here, he to? What is the cause of that suffering? That cause of the suffering is identity crisis. 
Did you understand the word identity crisis with reference to the false? What is false? That appears true, but it is not true. Alexander is wife. Can you show me where is the wife in you? Once I understand, once you show me where is the wife in you, I will leave yoga profession. You cannot find it. You cannot find the husband. You cannot find the wife. But as a wife, I fight. As a husband, I fight. What is that false? Now see, what is false? That appears true, but it is not true. So let me see the problem, not with identity crisis, but with the clarity. <clears throat> are you getting it, Antoinette? Did you? <laughs> you are become serious. Don't be serious. Keep smiling. So now we are understanding what exactly is the cause of the suffering, according to yoga. You see that I told you before that if you, I'm not criticizing, I'm understanding. I'm making you understand. If you want to know the cause of anxiety and the stress, the medical science gave you the 50 reasons, 50 reasons. And the 51st reason causes us still unknown. If you study, uh, you Google out and you study. What is the ultimate cause of the cancers? Causes are still unknown. But about that, you have 60 factors. Right? Have you done that? Have you done that research? I did a lot of research studies when I was in India. <clears throat> so I was aware of that. Now see, Tasya Hetur Avidya. What is the cause of my suffering in my life? Cause of, cause of, avidya, cause of suffering is ignorance. Cause of identification is ignorance. You know, we should understand that why I identify myself, why I fight, and then I repent. I fight and I say, I'm extremely sorry, but you did wrong. That's why, you know, I, I got angry. Come on, if he or she gets, he had, he or she has done wrong, why the hell I should be angry? Ask yourself, why should I be angry? Because you have done something wrong. Are you getting it? Why it happens? Identity crisis. Why there is an identity crisis? Because of ignorance. Are you getting it? See the logic, rational. Are you getting it? Keep a smile on the face. Your smile disappears. You know, why I don't see that? Ask yourself why your smile disappears. I have given the answer yesterday. So the master says, Tasya Hetur Avidya. Now in the second chapter, 24th Sutra, the cause of identification is ignorance. And what is ignorance? According to Eastern wisdom, masters, the uh, ignorance means incomplete knowledge. What is incomplete knowledge? Do you know who you are? 100%. That is incomplete knowledge. That causes the problem. That causes the identity crisis. And from the identity crisis, uh, it leads to suffering. You know, we have an American proverb, ignorance is bliss, because I don't know <laughs> I'm suffering or not. <laughs> we say ignorance is the cause of the suffering. Are you getting it? Ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. You are in a forest and you are sleeping and the tiger comes and eats you. And then use that proverb, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> we should understand we are a human being. So what he says, Tasya Hetur Avidya, the cause of ignorance.
cause of identification is ignorance. And what is that ignorance? I do not have clarity. Who am I? So what the Patanjali says in the third sutra, know thyself. Buddha says, know thyself. He makes the direct reference. And Buddha says, uh, Patanjali says, what he says, Tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. When you empty the mind of all the contents, you awaken to your real nature that brings an end to the suffering. Your suffering has not come to an end as a yoga teacher and you want to bring an end to the suffering of those people outside. I'm sorry, and I'm challenging you. Challenging your mind. <laughs> Are you getting it? So that is why I'm stressing, study yoga to study yourself first. Why? You will evolve, you will change. Your personality, your attitude will change. So one step by step, I picked. And then we will also understand, now... What is absence of suffering? What is the absence of suffering? That is the meaning. Uh, the word is used, hanam, hanopaya, han or hanopayam. So now see that we have second uh, chapter, 25th sutra, tadabhavat, sanyoga bhavo hanam, tadadrashe, kevalyam. Buddha uses nirvana. Patanjali uses kavalyam. Kavalyam or nirvana, both are the same word. So now see that. From where we started, we started the journey that asatoma satgamaya. You see that? Asatoma satgamaya gives the entire picture of yoga. What is the meaning? Move from the false to the truth. So what is false? That appears true, but it is not true. So there we entered into the Yoga Sutra. What is that Yoga Sutra? Yoga Sutra says identity crisis. What is identity crisis? I take it for granted that sky is blue. I see it is blue. How can you prove that it is not? I see the water in the mirage. How can you prove that it is not there? I see it from my naked eyes. What will be your answer? <laughs> the sense organs are the limited instruments for knowledge. The sense organ does not give me the real picture. Are you getting it? That is why we are studying Yoga Sutra. Huh? So now coming to the 25th Sutra, what it says, identity crisis is there because of ignorance. You remove the ignorance and you will enter into the permanent peace and happiness. Did you understand? Are you getting it, John? Keep a smile on the face. Yes, that's good. Let us see that here. Are you getting it? So what the 25th Sutra says, Tad bhavat sanyoga bhavo hanam. You see the word hanam is used. Hanam tad drashe kevalyam. He, Patanjali says directly, you remove the ignorance. What is the result? You are awakened. What is the uh, What is the way to remove that ignorance? Drop that identification. Identification. Why, why this identification? Because of the falsehood. And once you drop this identification, you live into that state of peace and happiness, my friends. That is what the yoga says. So if we study Yoga Sutra based on the commentary by the great masters, 
who are the great commentators, the Vyasa, Vachaspati, Mishra, Bhoj, Vigyan, Bhikshu. So I am using the commentary, all the four commentaries together. It will take for you to years and years to study. So I am. So this is now, I have given you the topic. So now we will come to the four, number four. What is number four? Four connections or preliminary considerations to start the journey of yoga. Tell me. You have been doing yoga. You have been studying yoga. Garish, before we leave these, can we do a call and response of these uh, sutras? Yes, we will just do now. We will just do now the first sutra that we talked about it. Heyam Dukham Anagatam Heyam Heyam Yeah, Dukham Dukham Anagatam Anagatam Beautiful. Heyam dukham anagatam. Heyam dukham anagatam. anagatam. So there are three words, in fact. So heyam dukham. Heyam dukham anagatam. Anagatam. Heyam. Heyam dukham anagatam. To come anagatam. Simple meaning that if we practice yoga according to Patanjali, not according to me or the best selling authors, <laughs> then I can remove my future miseries. Now, second uh, sutra we studied Drashya. 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 Sanyogo. Samyogo. Heya hetu. Heya hetu. You see, Drashya. 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 Drashya yo. Drashya yo. Yes, that's beautiful, John. Sanyogo. Samyogo. Heya he tu. Heya he tu. Drashya drashya yo. Drashya drashya yo. Sanyogo. Samyogo. Heya he tu. Heya he tu. That is the meaning. What is the cause of all the suffering? It is the identity crisis we all are suffering from. I never realize who the hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> I always claim, I am your husband. I am your teacher. Why you are sitting like this? You see, identity crisis. Sit the way you like. That is your choice. <clears throat> My job for two hours in this session is to guide and teach you. That's all. Your perception, <laughs> you get it or you don't get it, that is your problem. But what happens? I identify myself with the teacher. Why you do not understand? That causes the problem, the identity crisis. Now go to the third one. Tasya. Tasya. Hetur. Hetur. Avidya. Avidya. So you see that Hetur and Avidya, when they, they, they go together, then it is not spoken as Hetuhu. So we simply say tasya, tasya, hetur avidya, hetu avidya, 
तस्य 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 हेतुर अविद्या हेतुर अविद्या whenever the mind says you know i have a problem i have lot of challenges just start chanting tasya he tur vidya tasya tu vidya means it is the ignorance that is causing the problem in the mind that is causing the suffering no one else outside is responsible for my suffering i am responsible for my suffering and i am responsible for my peace yes you have to understand that 50% of the problem will go away from your life and when you start practicing yoga according to the teaching the rest 50% will go away so now we'll go to the fourth sutra that we studied this yoga sutra chapter 2 and 25 निर्वाण इन बुद्धिज्म और कैवल्यम इन योग सूत्र इट इज द सेम थिंग तद भावात तद भावात संयोगा भावो संयोगा भावो तद 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 दृश्य है दृश्य है कैवल्यम कैवल्यम तद भावात तद भावात just sing with full emotion and the feeling why we are studying ourselves we are not studying the yog sutra tad bhavat tad bhavat samyoga bhavo samyoga bhavo hanam hanam tad drishe he tad drishe he kevalyam kevalyam now tatra say tatra anubandho arbandho arbandho naam naam adhikari vishaya adhikari arkahi vishaya akari vishaya संबंधो संबंधो प्रयोजनानी प्रयोजनानी नाउ से इट अगेन तत्र तत्र अनुबंधो अनुबंधो नाम 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 अधिकारी अधिकारी विषय विषय संबंध समंज प्रयोजनानी प्रयोजनानी सो दिस सूत्र इज नॉट फ्रॉम द योग सूत्र वाई एंड वाई नॉट दिस सूत्र टू यू टू गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल सो दैट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ वी हैव टू गो टू स्टडी दिस योग सूत्र योग स्टडी ऑफ योग सूत्र मीन्स आई एम स्टडिंग माई सूत्र What is the first sutra? Atyog anushashanam. Now the meaning of that at. Normally, roughly, loosely, wrongly translated in English as now <laughs> the discipline of yoga. Now. So why the word now is used by the Patanjali? ask yourself now is used by the patanjali patanjali says now you are the seeker of yoga you have come to me to bring an end to the suffering that is why i am starting the discipline and education of yoga from a to z 
So what is the most important point? Seeker. But what I should know before becoming a seeker? What I should know before having a driving license? Compare that. I should write it. I should pass the written examination of the rules of the road, isn't it? And the skill set of a driving. Clear? Now apply the same before you study yoga. So I should have some skill sets before I study yoga. Same thing applies to physics, studying physics, chemistry, any, any branch of science. Right? You are studying economics and you go to a medical school. Will that work? <laughs> Ask yourself. You have to become aware of yourself. So this sutra gives you an idea and understanding that who is eligible seeker. So what is that? It gives you an idea. There are four connections. You have to, you have to bring the four dots and you have to connect them together. Motor Vehicle Commission, first dot. Rules of the Road, second dot. Driving Skills, third dot. Car, huh? whatever the car you have used, new, luxury, that doesn't matter. matter. Huh? You see the four dots? So when you connect all the four dots, huh? you work together, then you have a driving license. Am I clear? Am I clear? Now ask yourself, what are the dots to connect to study yoga? <laughs> ask yourself. So I have already translated this verse. The preliminary questions before the seeker treat the path successfully are the determina determination of the competency of the student. Are you competent? You see that if you want to study nuclear physics, oh, you have to do bachelor's and master's, then you have to write a dissertation, and then you it's very difficult to get admission in a college or university that teaches you nuclear physics. Yoga and meditation, close your eyes, focus on the breath. It is mindfulness. Are you understanding? Even if as a teacher you are guiding like this, what is happening? What will happen? People will take you for granted. Are you understanding that? Oh, no, no, no. It's a pleasure. Just close your eyes, focus on the mindfulness. <laughs> you are doing meditation. We don't have... We mind does not know any principles behind that meditation. We are not clear about it. But we are definitely clear as far as false is concerned. And that is why we people are taken for granted. Are you getting it? I'm talking in a closed circle. Our great yoga teachers. So that is why we should understand the four preliminary considerations or connections or dots. What is the first or determination of a competency of a student? Second is the subject matter. Third, huh? third is the, its connection with the knowledge of the Eastern wisdom and its result. I should be 100% clear about these four dots so that I can connect these dots at all the time in my life. Are you clear? Let us make me you. 
So four connections determine the student's competency, understanding the subject matter, the purpose for which the journey is undertaken, and its connection. The above verse says four connections. Now understand, first connection is means eligibility. Am I eligible to drive? Yes, I have a driving license. Where is the eligibility of mine to become a student, to become a seeker on the path? Where is that eligibility? I told you a wonderful story. A woman uh, in New Jersey, she hired me for her private lesson and she recently divorced. She told me a couple of weeks ago that no, I... I will come to you after I took the duo. So she invited me. So I used to go to her house. First session. So I was sitting in her in the patio, and uh, she uh, she was preparing a cup of coffee. So 15 minutes passed. It's a one hour session. Okay, no issue. So she came to me and then she said, just hold on. I will I will take just two minutes. And she went outside the patio. It's a glass door, so I was looking at her. She had a wonderful meditation smoke for two minutes. <laughs> she came back to, now I'm ready. Now you're, you have already a heightened state of carbon dioxide concentration in the brain. What meditation does? It increases the oxygen concentration. So I said, let me give her a small practice of 10 minutes. So what happened? You know, they both fly. Heightened state of carbon dioxide and, and heightened state of oxygen. She said, my brain is just breaking up. What kind of a meditation you gave? Eligibility of a student. I should understand my mind where my mind is going. So eligibility, as I said, what is the eligibility of a student? Three aspects is there. I should become aware of the impurities of the mind and I should be ready to remove the impurities of the mind. First, right? Impurities. That is known as mala. I should also remove the distractions of the mind. Now, I'll tell you a great story about the distractions of the mind. I was giving a lot of lessons here in Arizona in a group session. I don't tell you, I will not tell you where. I don't, you should not identify. So that beautiful woman, you know, she always supports me. You know, all the women supports me. I don't know why, but maybe because of the beer. So, 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 so. So I used to give lessons on meditation in a group, but because she used to care me, so I also used to care her. So I saw her that she is visiting in meditation. I said, no, your body is steady. The moment I said body is steady, come on. My instruction, the steadiness in the body. And you are moving the body. So personally, I called her and I said, what what you're doing? No, you don't know. I have a lot of problems in the body. It is because of the distractions of the mind. There are some delusions present in the mind. You'll be surprised. That is what the Eastern psychology says. And then I said, what I will do? During the practice of meditation, it was a group. I will come to you and I will pat the moment your body moves. You have only to become aware. Only, just, just, I will pat you. Will you allow me to touch your body? Yes, yes. After five sessions, all the distractions stopped. <laughs> Brittany, I cannot do like you, but I did. <laughs> you see that? That needs to be understood clearly. Lara knows who is she, but you know. 
And since then she says, it is such a wonderful practice. So if I don't know, if I don't become an eligible seeker, the journey cannot be complete. So two things. First, impurities of the mind. I should recognize and I should continue to work to purify the mind. That makes me a seeker. Second is, I should get rid of the distractions, not in the mind, with my thoughts, feelings, and emotions, but also in the body. Third, I should understand the principles, how to remove the ignorance. Did I talk about it? Ignorance, identity crisis, cause of suffering. So these three aspects must be treated consciously. And I can tell you, once you start working on it, you will never recall you have anxiety or anger or duality or conflict. All they will leave you completely. So it means what? What is the meaning of this? You go to a psychiatrist. Why you go to a psychiatrist? You are healthy. Mind is perfect. Will you go to a psychiatrist? Doctor, please check me. I may have some problem in the future. <coughs> Take care of me. You never go there. So what is the why I'm giving a contrast to the yoga? When you are fairly mentally and the physically healthy, you have made yourself healthy. Then you treat the path of yoga. It does not mean it doesn't take care of anxiety and other problems. It takes care. But being a seeker, you are aware. What are your challenges? You know the root cause. And impurities, distraction, ignorance, that makes you an eligible seeker. You'll be surprised. 90% problem is to become a seeker. You need only 10% effort to succeed in any meditation. So that is why this master is a great master. He says, no, first you check yourself. Are you an eligible seeker? In the first chapter of the Yoga Sutra, the qualification suggested is to understand the mind. Second connection is, what is the subject matter? Tell me. What is the subject matter? The subject matter is to know my real self. To find who am I? What we say? Okay. Subject matter, we deviate it completely. What we are learning? Four dots to become a seeker on the path of yoga. Are you getting it? Think of, start thinking of it. I'm always in hurry. Can you guide me meditation? Your mind will remain in hurry during the practice of meditation. Why should I guide you? So the more and more you understand this, and as a teacher you start guiding, you will understand, oh, it's very easy. Let me calm down. Calm down. Second connection is this. A third, what is the third, third connection? Third connection is the goal. Result. What is the result? I should find out my real nature. What is the beginning? I should experience that inner peace and happiness, love and wisdom. And what we normally say? Oh, I had a wonderful experience. You are a wonderful teacher. Why? Because I have an out-of-body experience. What the hell you are talking? Do you have out-of-body experience? If you are out-of-body, you, you are already in heaven. We don't try to put logic in reason. You can transcend the body. That is right in 
knowledge in yoga. We will also understand. So third point is very clear. Clear? Goal. My goal is clear. Now what is the... So you have to connect all the three dots with the knowledge coming from the teachers of the Eastern wisdom. That is the fourth connection. Once you understand the subject matter, once you are a seeker, clear? Once you are a seeker and once huh, you know the subject matter and the goal, now from where I get the knowledge? From the teachings of the Eastern wisdom, from the authentic masters. This guy is not authentic. The knowledge that I am expressing you is coming from those teachers. A slight simple example. You go to a physics class and the physics teacher says, forget about Einstein and Edison. I will teach you a new physics. <laughs> what you will do? What you will do? Tell me. What you will do? That is what we are doing. I will teach you new yoga. I will teach you new mindfulness, please. I am interacting with you. Huh? Teach. Here is, this is authenticity. This is Newton's law of motion. I am definitely a physics teacher. This is Einstein's theory of relativity. Don't we do that? Don't we do that? Huh? We all have motor vehicle driving books, and you say, oh, this rule is wrong. I won't follow. I have my new rule. But we do it so openly. Come on. It's yoga. <laughs> it's meditation. Lara keeps smiling. <laughs> do you see that? Are you getting it? Clear. We feel frustrated. We make others frustrated only because these four connections are not clearly understood. Clear. Eligibility of becoming a, having a driving license, I must refer the text of huh, the book of a vehicle commission of a particular state. Is it clear or not? Same thing applies to yoga. Am I clear? So I should keep those authentic texts. Or you should learn from a teacher who personalizes you. So now, now secret of success in yoga. That was the fifth point that we are covering now. What is the fifth point? Ah, beautiful. I'm taking it from the Upanishad. It's a Bhradaranyaku Upanishad. No, Panchadashi, sorry. There's another topical text which says, secret of success in yoga is to follow four steps. So we'll understand that four steps. Atma, can you call and response starts? Atma, Brahmeti, Vakyarthi Nisheshen Vicharite. You see, again, it is a sutra, that, and once we explain, it goes into hundreds of pages, but I will not be doing hundreds of pages. So let us chant it again. Atma. Atma. Brahmeti, Brahmeti, Vakyarthi, Vakyarthi, Nisheshena, Nisheshena, Vicharite, Vicharite, Atma, Atma, Brahmeti, Brahmeti, Vakyarthi, Yak. Garti Nisheshena Nisheshena 
Vicharite. Vicharite. Now you see that I made a very uh, loose translation and then we will understand. A thorough analysis of the self, means real self, is the supreme self. And the direct knowledge that I am the supreme self or the real reason should be known. You know, that is loose translation. So if we go deeper and if we refer other texts and the teachings of the masters who commented on this sutra, it says we should have four steps. Lara knows it. We have discussed it many a times. What is the first step? I don't know. Let me know it. I don't know the principle. Let me know the principle. Clear? Second is, I do not understand. Let me understand it. Third, I do not experience. Let me practice it. Fourth, I practice. I experience, but I don't see the change. Let me analyze what are the obstacles during the journey. Remove that. Then continue the practice to absorb into the highest state of meditation. The knowledge of the reality will dawn and I am there. Are you getting it? Now let us go a little deeper. I do not know. Let me know it. How do you know it? How do you know the physics? If you want to study physics, do you study chemistry? No, no, the science says this is what meditation is. Are you getting it? <laughs> Are you getting it? I'm not opposing science. I told you. I studied physics, chemistry, mathematics. I have masters in psychology, physiology. I like it. I understand it. And I have a fascination for physics and chemistry. If I want to study chemistry, do I go to study economics? That is the comparison I'm making. If I have to explain what meditation is, I must explain from the principles of yoga. Are you getting it? Are you clear? Yes, I can complement the understanding of meditation from the science. Are you getting it? I should complement. Knowledge is knowledge. But if I explain the very definition, understanding of asana based on the teachings of Yoga Sutra, I am doing my job as a teacher very well. Are you clear? I do not know. Let me know it. I'm just giving you a general reference. So the first step contains the six steps that we will cover uh, in Gita and uh, in, uh, in future. Then second part is, now I understand the principle, simple understand. Say, for example, asana. Uh, I gave the same example last time. What is asana according to Yoga Sutra? Uh, Sthir Sukham Asanam. Two elements. What are the two elements? Steadiness and comfortable or happiness. So happiness in the mind, steadiness in the body. See, now find out any principle of physical exercise system which says steadiness in the body, happiness in the mind. Give me any physical... They have very well programmed physical exercise system. No doubt about it. But what we are doing in yoga, now go further. Prayatna shaitilyata ananta samapatyabhyam. So that means what exactly is the method of doing the asana? 
that is explained by the Patanjali. Prayatna Shaitalyata. I should not give too much of stretching so that the mind goes into anxiety and reaction. The I should not give too little of the stretching so that my mind becomes lazy in practicing the asana. That is the meaning of the first word. Prayatna Shaitalyata. Now, if you are guiding the asana based on this principle, and you are guiding, you are simply giving the instruction like this, what is going to happen to your students? Huh? Uh, in the second chapter about asana, so I'll tell you the number of the sutra. Uh, once I remember, it just came to my mind. So, so what happens? Now you are guiding Hold on, my friend. Are you giving too much of stretching? Is it causing any anxiety in your mind? Yes, please don't do it. Loosen a little bit. Are you giving are you losing too much the body? Or is mind distracting? No, don't do that. Find out ah, the level of awareness and attention in between. It takes time. I can tell you, once you start guiding like this, those people will raise their awareness and in heightened state of awareness, their anxiety reaction is already gone. You cannot live in anxiety and reaction when you live at higher level of awareness. And Prayatna Shaitali. Ananta Samapati Bhyam, that is the second uh, st second step of doing the asana. What is the meaning of Ananta Samapati Bhyam? Keep the mind in the infinite space. Means you are doing a posture, you have found the middle ground, and neither too much of stretching nor too less. And then you know, the mind is looking into the infinite space, either inside the head or the heart, or you are aware of the breath. There are many tools. What will happen? What is the result? Tato Dandana Vigata, the third sutra of Patanjali, where he says, you get immune to dualities. What is dualities? What is opposing factors at the physical level? Cold and heat. I went to a 700-year-old monastery in the Indian part of the Tibet, that is known as Ladakh. 700-year-old, well, hardly 10, 12 years of monks, young monks. They were doing every day almost 100 Surya Namaskar every day for two hours. But the guy who was teaching, he was sitting in a lotus pose. Withdraw the mind inside, looking at those kids. Only because of following these sutras, he was sweating in such a chilling. In the beginning, you start with the physical and you reach to that state. So physical, opposing quality, opposing factors of at the physical level. What are the opposing factors at the emotional level? Love and hate. What are the opposing factors at the mental level? Pain and pleasure. So you get immune to dualities. You transcend these dualities. They ask me to sit like this for six hours. I used to teach for 10 hours, say six, nine hours. But I acquired the habit when I came here. That's why I gave half an hour of break. <laughs> so did you understand the sec first, second part? Shravanam, Mananam. So when first is, I know the principle. So then you do Manan, contemplation. What I did with the three sutras, I did I don't understand. Let me understand. So I understood exactly what needs to be done. Clear? Now everything is clear. Mind is doubt-free. There is a clarity and conviction. Start the practice. Now I tell you the 
if you make your participants a hundred percent clear in his or her head, what will happen? They will be self-inspired to treat the path of yoga. You need not to worry about it. But if they have a doubt, huh? <laughs> they have a doubt. No, 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 the sign says, let the sign say it. First explain my principle correctly. I shouldn't. Are you getting it? Huh? I have seen beautiful kids of huh? Alexander. So you start teaching, you know, the neuroscientist says you should not be obstinate. You say, mom, what you're saying? <laughs> Do you see that? That is the lacking. So I don't understand. And so once you understand it clearly, it inspires you. And then you can do the practice. Take an example of the Buddha. Uh, have you heard the story of a Buddha? that uh, when he was born, he was the only son of a king in India, and an astrologer was invited, and he predicted that this boy is going to become a great monk. So the king said, how to, how not to make him the great king, a great monk, and the master, I want him to take over my kingdom. Have you gone to last speakers? I think what is known as Sin City? Florida? Huh? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Sin City. So, uh, so his father created a Sin City in the kingdom for Buddha. Means all kinds of pleasures, anytime. Instinctive, impulsive. He lived in that sin city for more than six years. So go to the previous sutra, the four factors, the four dots. He was constantly contemplating and reflecting, living even in the sin city. And after that, yesterday I told you, king said, now is the time to take over the kingdom. You become the king. He said, I will do it, provided I should never become sick after becoming a king. I should never die after becoming a king. No enemy should invade my kingdom after I become a king. His father said, not possible. Buddha said, I'm leaving you. He left it. He did austerity for six years. Now understand. Six years, you can say those six years are spent in becoming a seeker. Impurities of the mind, distractions, understanding the ignorance. So I will recall the name, then I will tell you. The second last master, he changed 26 masters. So I'm deviating a little bit, so you should also understand. If your teacher do not make the concept clear, it is good to leave that teacher. Find another. That is what Buddha did. And you tell your students the same thing. What will happen? Then you should evolve your mind to be a teacher. I, my concept should be clear. So the second last teacher, I don't remember the last teacher. I know Alar Kalam. His name was Alar Kalam. Was the last teacher of Buddha. 
I once I remember that I'll tell you. So he was giving too much of difficult postures. Only a small meal once a day. He was reduced to skeleton. It's very important. Once you become a seeker, your journey is half done. So after doing a lot of postures from that master and austerity, and he was sitting under a tree. A beautiful woman brought the food. They were five friends. So that beautiful, you know, be women are always beautiful, you know, just take it for granted. You know. Me and John, you know, don't consider. <laughs> so, so beautiful women went to the first friend. He said, no, I'm in austerity. My master told me. But he did not know the reason. He did not ask it. Second, refused. Third, refused. Fourth, refused. Fifth refused. Then the six is the Buddha. Buddha ate that desert. It was beautiful, sweet, Indian desert. Then he closed his eyes. And then he asked himself, this is what happens because of the second step. I have to cultivate that quality to succeed in yoga. So he was closed his eyes and he realized, I ate desert and then calm down the mind. When the mind was calm, the body is also calm. He left the master. He said, torturing in the body is not the way of practice of yoga. On the way, he found Alar Kalam. He took him to the previous master and he requested that master. Uh, he is, you know, he had just broken all your walls. Better let me take him. And he took him to under a Bodhi tree. And there he practiced meditation. You see, that understanding comes by knowing all these principles. Are you getting it? Did you get the my mess is right? Then what happened? First time, first masses, that is known as Dharma Chakra Parivartan, a specific word. He invited all his friends, leave this crazy master. He doesn't know. And he gave the first sermon on four noble truths. So we, we, he, we read the story with great interest. But I have to find out what is for me. What is for me? To become a seeker. How to become a seeker? Purify the mind. Get rid of the distraction. Remove the ignorance. This is the masses hidden there. So the teaching says, the same, my friend. Now, now comes Shankara. Ah, Shankara, Shankaracharya was a great master. Huh? So how to achieve the highest state of yoga? Huh? I give you another uh, sutra and we will do its chanting. Shrutehe, Shatgunam, Vidyan Mananam, Vidyana Mananam Mananadapi Nididhyasam Little typical Nidhi Dhyasam Nidhi Dhyasam Lakshagunam Anantam Nirvikalpam You can reach to the state of mindfulness. How? By learning these principles, contemplation and reflection again and again and again until the mind becomes clear and followed by the meditation. 
But the best part in this uh, verse is that learning the principles is the first step. But contemplation means asking the questions, becoming clear about the principles again and again is 100 times superior. You are listening from me. You have learned the principles. Call and response is there. Now you know all the sutras. So you will do the sutras and you pass on to the others. But you have not contemplated. You have not understood what, why, where, when. You did not ask the questions. Your mind is not clear. It means your progress will be struck. I can tell you, yoga can bring an end to the suffering as a teacher. And when I go home, I have a lot of problems. Don't do that. Don't do that. I tickle people sometime. I was in TZ Max with my honey and that woman was bubbling with the laughing. Oh, laughing. So one can hear, you know, one can listen. Oh, oh. So she was, you know, at the cash counter. I'm very happy that you, you are smiling. Oh, yes, that's my job. So are you smiling all the time? Yes. Do you smile at home? No, that's totally different. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't live in identity crisis. Brittany, are you listening to me? Yes. So what the master is saying, once you learn the principle, close your eyes and ask the questions. What is this? Why this principle is? What, why, how, where, and when? So this is what the master is saying. You have to contemplate. That is 100%. That is the second step. Hundred. That is 100 times better than simply listening to a teacher. And after you are clear, Meditation is 100 times better than contemplation, the second step. And the final state is the objectless state of the mind is infinitely superior. That is our goal. One word of caution, I should do it. Yeah, first let me cover this. By the first step, the knowledge in your mind enters. What is that knowledge? What science tells you? I told you that I love science, but science is a different approach. Oh, you have a lot of stress. Okay, we've tried to manage your stress. One thing is very clear. You cannot manage stress in your life. The stress will continue. But once you know that there is a real self in me which is full of peace and happiness, love and wisdom, will you focus on managing the stress or will you focus on discovering the self? Tell me. That is the wonder of yoga. But we are full of doubt. That is why we do not tell others. I teach with a big face, you know, I'm so much stressed. <laughs> I will manage your stress practice meditation. Do you see that? Why it is happening? So first thing, understand. The first step is like a flame. The second step, what is the second goal of the second step? That knowledge is not allowed to vanish from your mind. Are you getting it? Second step. First step is, I don't know, let me know. It's second step. I do not understand, let me understand. So what is the goal of the second step? Beautifully put by this master. I love this master. I'll tell you about this master, the way he explains. First step. You allow the mind to have a flame of a knowledge, real self. I gave an example. 
Continue to manage this stress throughout your life. It will never happen. Instead, start working on yourself. Let me discover. So that flame is the first step. Now the second step, what you does if you contemplate and reflect on these sutras, you understand, you repeat it again in your mind, that knowledge is not allowed to vanish. Are you getting it? Knowledge is never vanish. Wherever you are, you are with your honey, identity crisis is gone. Because why? You don't allow the knowledge to vanish. Hey, what the hell you are doing? Okay, let me do the way you ask me to do it. What's the problem? Where's the problem? No identity crisis. I'm your wife. How the hell? And you complete the sentence. You might have done. Just as the flame is protected by the wind screen, so the other thoughts are not allowed to overwhelm the right knowledge by the second step. That is why I'm stressing you. These are the core principles. If you do not study, understand these core principles, Yoga Sutra will, you will listen from this one year, it will go out from the other ear. It will leave the brain empty. Are you understanding the importance of the second step? The second step is creates a windscreen so that the other thoughts are not allowed to overwhelm the right knowledge. And the third step is a practice. The flame is kept up to burn bright by trimming, by trimming the wick. What is the wick? Impurities of the mind. So when the impurities of the mind is gone, distraction is gone, ignorance is gone. I enter into the objectless state. What is Ashtanga Yoga, eight limb path? The highest, highest limb is mm, Samadhi. I enter into the highest state. Are you getting it? Are you understanding? Are you clear, my friends? First step, I don't know, let me know it. It is like a knowledge enters into your mind like a flame. Stress management versus discovery of peace in me. Peace is my essential nature, managing the stress. Managing the anxiety, happiness is within me. See that. Are you not excited? Are you not inspired? If you are not inspired, you are not a seeker. Leave yoga. Stop yoga. Just yoga is just, just uh, everything is bad. So knowledge. And then what you happens? You don't allow that flame of the knowledge to vanish by contemplation, by reflection. So what that happens? That removes your wrong notions about yourself. That starts dropping the identity crisis. And then what happens? The intellect is ready to inspire you. You wake up in the morning. I have to do a lot of things. How much time I have? Two hours. Okay, what I have to do? Oh, so I have still half an hour, so let me practice meditation first. The mind will be inspired. That is the importance of these steps. I don't know, let me know it. I don't understand, let me understand it. Huh? I don't experience, let me practice it. Done? Clear? Listen to this again and again. My master used to tell me, you know, I used to entrap my master. Why? My father was a great scholar of Sanskrit, Kate, so he was teaching in university. So it was easy for me to learn Sanskrit and these texts. But I never contemplated. I claim that I know. My master tolerated me for two years. He did not say anything. I used to interrupt him. But after two years, he patted on my shoulder one day 
Perhaps he found that this guy is not going to leave until he will find something. So he patted on my shoulder. He said, you see that I am teaching you what is not written in the text. Even though it is based on those principles, but I am teaching you based on my personal experiences. As a teacher, I can personalize you the teaching that. so that you can maximize your learning. That was the last day. It happened in 87 or 88. Until 2004, I did not say anything until he asked me. So after many years, so I, we used to sit on a floor uh, with all the students, uh, the way we do it in yoga studio. So one day he said, now you have to sit with me on the chair. Today, you are going to teach. I said, no, I, how dare I can teach before you? No, no, you have to do it. So you see that the master realizes, they personalizes the teaching. So once you follow these steps, you will see, I can promise you, why should I promise? Yoga promises. These masters promises. At least you will bring an end to the suffering in your life. Is that more important than teaching others in stress and in suffering? <laughs> Buddha was walking. in a city and everyone was looking at him. He was full of cheer and smile. You know, you see that what happens if you see people with a big face, how your mind reacts? Avoid ignore. And what if, if you have the same big face? So that's why I'm saying keep a smile on the face. Don't make me crazy. So anyhow, the Buddha was walking. And uh, so people said, are you God? Buddha smiled and said, no, I'm not. Are you an angel? Another guy asked. No, I'm not an angel. Are you a scholar? No, I am not. Are you a monk? No, I am, I am not. Then what sort of a being you are? Buddha said, I am awakened. That is the goal of yoga. Awakened to what? Awaken to my honey? No. Awaken to my real self. <laughs> Are you getting it? That is the essence of our journey of yoga. <laughs> uh, this is what, uh, you know, this is what uh, Patanjali says. Now see that, compare this, what Buddha said and what Patanjali says. Patanjali says in the first chapter, third sutra, he says the same thing. Tadadrashtu swarupe avasthanam. He says the same thing in a different way. Tada. Drashtu swarupe avasthanam. Tada. Drashtu swarupe avasthanam. Tada. Drashtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam. So simple meaning. Mind is settled in the real nature. Another meaning. I am awakened to my real nature. So he did not say real nature. He says, Buddha simply said, I am awakened. Whether you say I am awakened or whether you say I found my real self, it is the same thing. 
Are you clear? John, you got the sutra. Tada drashtu. Yes, yes. Uh, I can see. Yes. Tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. It's the same thing. Know thyself. Tada drashtu. So what is the goal of yoga? To know myself. Who am I? Drop the identity crisis. Drop the ignorance. Drop the ignorance. Yes, last, I think, you know, that's a big. Uh, let us pick up. Uh, I want to, again, put that wisdom into your mind so that you should never forget it. It is coming from another Upanishad. Maitri and uh, Gargi. Maitri and Gargi were the two great yoga master, women masters. And uh, they were the, their husband was, one husband was Yagyavalka. Yagyavalka was a great uh, master in our Eastern wisdom. He contributed to Upanishads. He contributed to many sutras and many principles. He was an ancient master, lived for five to six thousand years ago. So I'm just quoting Yagya Valk Master, and then we'll bring an end to this session. We have still ten minutes. So just understand that. Do you love your honey? Say yes or no. Brandy? So what this master is saying, now read it. Verily, not for the sake of the husband, my dear, is the husband loved, but he is loved for the sake of the self. Means what? I love my honey because I love myself, not because I love my honey. Naked truth in the life. Huh? Naked Truth, Brittany, Alex, Alexander, Leslie. We will understand. If you have any doubt, let me know. But he is loved for the sake of the self. In its true nature is one of the supreme self. Verily, not for the sake of wife, my dear, is the wife loved. He wrote it 4,000 years ago. Verily, not for the sake of the wife, my dear, is the wife love, but she is loved for the sake of the self. Verily, not for the sake of the sons, my dear, are the sons loved, but they are loved for the sake of the self. And go on, continue. Now, let me make it very clear, and then I'll invite a couple of questions. Do you love your honey? Yes. What is the basis of that love? Take my example. You hate me. Will you attend my class? Yes and no. No. But if you like me, will you attend my class? Yes. So your love to me is based on your liking in the mind. Not on the love. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you understanding? So first condition, the mind creates, I like you. Hence, I will listen to you. Hence, I love you. But if I dislike you, you may be knowing everything. I am not going to come. Right? First point. Understand. So my mind has gone deeper. So let me cover this part in a different way. So what is the first condition of my love? That I should like you. Clear? But question is, what is this liking? And what is disliking? Who likes yellow color? 
give me the five reasons why you like yellow color. There is no reason. You simply like it. You may give any reason. Do you see that? Liking and disliking comes from habitual mind. Based on my desire to be happy by an object outside. Are you getting it? Liking anything outside gives me happiness. Right? Ask the next question. Where happiness is located? <laughs> Inside you or in that object? We are treating the path the way we have to follow the four steps. I don't know. Let me know it. I don't understand. Let me understand it. I don't practice. I don't experience. Let. So we are picking up the second step. Uh, I don't understand the principle that why I love my honey. It is only because I love myself. So we are understanding that. Are you getting it? Love. I love you, honey. I see a lot of people. And I know. First is dating, then becoming soulmate. And after a few months, few months becoming sour mate. Understand. From there, the real journey of the Yoga Sutra will begin. I'm repeating it again. What is that? I like someone. Why I like someone? Because that gives me happiness. So the mind in ignorance, because of the identity crisis, mind says this object, this person gives me happiness. Clear? Ask yourself where, where happiness is located. One example, I always give of the pasta. Pasta gives me happiness. So it means does happiness lies in the pasta or in you? And if the happiness lies in the pasta, then everyone should eat pasta. If you have stress, eat pasta, you'll be happy. <laughs> you have sleep disturbance, eat pasta, you'll be happy. We don't want to accept the fact. Yoga says, without understanding the fact, forget about this journey. Are you understanding? So it means no object outside can ever give me happiness because happiness is located in my mind, inside. So your honey is also located outside. <laughs> yeah? You know, sometimes we say, you know what we say, two bodies, one soul. Total ignorance. Two bodies, one soul. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see that? This is what the master is saying. Understand, be very clear. Now we have understood until this point, this happiness lies within me. Right? So now whether I like it or I hate it, I love myself. Do you see that? In extreme cases, I love myself much more than anyone. It is because of my love. because It is because it gives me happiness when I'm living with you as your honey, as my honey. That is why I love you. I love you because it gives me happiness. I will hate you if it does not give me happiness. What is the result? I love myself the most. So you should not say to your honey this, but you should realize as a fact, live in, don't live in identity crisis. <clears throat> you have not reached to that state and you will go to your honey. It happened a couple of times to my students in India and there was a big issue. No, no, I love myself because you gave me happiness. 
don't do that. First, you understand it clearly, practice it. You reach to that higher state of the consciousness. You live into that meditative state. And then you, the knowledge will be revealed naturally to you that how you need to express that peace and happiness with your relationship. Is this too much? Let me have a couple of questions and then any question that you... Yes, 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 yes. Grish, I know this is in one of the books that you wrote. Um, which book is it? Uh, which one? Uh, this is yeah, How to is. Succeed in Meditation. I... How to succeed hmm. I have uh, it. I just can't find it. I um I kept thinking it was one of the books that I have in front of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Thank any you. question? You see that it is not a talk and a lecture. It is just a life changing. That is what my master taught me for twenty six years. He said. Well, he always used to know it. Study why you are, why you have come here to study yourself. Keep that in your mind. Change your attitude, your behavior, your thought process. So what happens when you have started changing? You will remember these sutras naturally. It will come to your mind. Do you see that? No, you know, this is a tough task. You know, who cares? I will continue fighting. Well, then do it. <laughs> then what should I do? What the teacher should do? I know I'm, uh, uh, what do you say? I'm erasing your wounds that is sleeping inside. Why? To remove them. You need not to tell me anything. Just apply these principles in your daily life and see how the transformation takes place. Any question? I have another question. Yes. <laughs> when we meet again in a little bit, is it the same link or is it a different link? It's a different link. I have already sent okay. it. Yeah, I need to send it to a couple other people that aren't um, 